Welcome to the tutorial video in 22.3. In this video, I'm going to talk about history and passage in Harlow 3. Harlow provides two different macros for working with the history of the story and other passages. These are history and passage macros. The history macro provides a way to access the names of previous passage visited by the player. As a player visits passages, their names are added to an array that the history macro can access. As an array, other keywords like contains or is in can be used to test its contents. This allows us to, as the player progresses across passages, see if they have visited certain things. This is a quick way to check this. Since it is an array and the use of the keywords contains or is in can be used, we can quickly see if the result of using the macro history contains a value or if a value is in the result of using the history macro. This very quickly, like I said, allows us to check different passages if the player has visited a certain location or has visited a certain passage. And right here we see the result of that. We have visited the start passage. So I check to see if the variable, the result of using the history macro that is, contained the start passage and it did so we have visited the start passage. We can also ask, access other passages. The passage macro allows for accessing other passages within the story. Use of the passage macro returns a data map, key value pairs, that can be accessed through its key value pairs, and it has three of them. Its source, which is the text result contained within the passage, its name, which is text, and any tags it has, which is an array. So right here I have the two tags which is the result of an array gotten back by looking at the tags of a passage that is unconnected within the story. So let's look at all this code. First, let's look at history. We see here we use the history macro and the array it returns. So we're saying, okay, if the, re if the array returned by the use of the history macro contains the value start, then we show this text. And we know it contains the value start because start was the first passage. Then we moved to the second passage working with history. So we know the value start is within the array that the history macro has access to. So we say, okay, if history contains start, then we do something. Oh, else we haven't visited the start passage, so maybe we're debugging. And in fact, let me show you that. So if we debug directly from here, we can see we get this message because the array returned by the use of the history macro does not contain the value start. Because of course it doesn't, this was the very first passage it visited, there were no other passages. Moving over to accessing passages, we see right here the use of the passage macro and then the name of the passage we want to get information from, in this case unconnected. Let's close this and look at unconnected. Unconnected, as we see here, doesn't connect to any other passages, but it is within the story. We see it has content, this passage is not connected, and two tags, one tag and two tag. Coming back to accessing passages, we see we're getting the data map representing that passage by using its name unconnected. Then we're using the common possessive apostrophe usage because it is a data map and we want to get at one of its values. So we want to get at the value that's represented by this key within the data map. So say this result which returns a data map, we use a possessive apostrophe and then the key we want, in this case tags. We're saving that right here in a temporary variable. Unconnected tags and then we're looking at the result right after that. So we can get the tags, the name, or the source of other passages within a story by using the passage macro, using supplying its name and the possessive apostrophe syntax. And then what key we want to look for, source, name, or tags, it will then give it back to us and we can save that and then do something with it. In this case, it's temporary, I'm immediately getting it back and then showing it. So in this, this video, I've covered two different ways of looking at the history and other passages within a story in Harlow. The first of which is the history macro, which it returns an array of the various passages a player has visited during the story. We looked at a case of using the contains keyword to examine if a player had visited a certain passage by testing the, ver 
testing the variable, that is the value returned by use of the history macro, and then the contains keyword, and then the value we're looking for. We tested for start, and we saw that we had visited the start passage. We could also use the passage macro to get at other passages within the story. And I showed within this example that we can actually get to unconnected passages by simply using its name. So we get a data map by using a passage and that passage name. We access a data map representing that passage from a story. We can look for its name, its tags, and its source. And in this example, I looked at its tags, which returned an array, and then we immediately saw the result of that array when we played the story. So this video covers history and passage, two different ways to get at the meta, the meta aspects of a story within Harlow. We can get to the history, what passages we visit. We can also interact with, though not change, other passages, tags, name, and source. Thanks for watching.